Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Welcome to EnglishClass101.com's English in Three Minutes, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn English. Hey everyone, Alicia here. In this series, we're going to learn some easy ways to ask and answer common questions in English. It's really useful and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask what someone's hobbies are without using the word hobbies. You've probably seen the question, do you have any hobbies? Or, what are your hobbies? in an English textbook before. However, native English speakers almost never use the word hobbies when asking about them. A much more natural way to ask the same question is, what do you do for fun? Let's practice this question. What do you do for fun? What do you do for fun? You can also ask, what do you do in your free time? What do you do in your free time? So how would you answer this question? Let's look at how native speakers would do it. The easiest way is to say, I like to, or just, I like, followed by what you like to do. For example, if you like watching movies, you could say, I like to watch movies, or I like watching movies. I like to watch movies or I like watching movies. And if you like golf, you could say, I like to play golf, or I like playing golf. I like to play golf, or I like playing golf. You can emphasize how much you like your hobby by adding a word like really in front of like. For example, I really like watching movies. On the other hand, if you want to play down how much you like something, you can say kind of. For example, I kind of like playing tennis. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. If you don't have any special hobbies or don't want to be specific, a good way to reply is, I like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. I like hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. Just use I like and add hanging out with my friends and then add and stuff like that. Making you learn by having fun. It's a thing. Infotainment. Ice. Hi everybody, welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're gonna to be talking about 10 things to do in the summer in the United States. So let's go to travel abroad to travel abroad to travel abroad abroad means outside of your country so meaning to travel to a place not the united states in my case please don't forget to in this expression so many of my students will say this uh, summer i'm going europe you need to use to before the place you do not however need to use to before there so like students sometimes will say uh, I want to go to there. You can't do that. You have to use to before the specific name of a place. There is not a specific place, so you don't need to use to. Keep that one in mind. To relax at the beach. To relax at the beach. Ah, oh, that sounds fantastic right now. To relax at the beach. You go to the beach and you just relax there. You lay in the sun, you go swimming, maybe you drink a beer. You get a tan if you would like to do that. Of course, some people don't. You put on sunscreen, whatever it is that you like to do at the beach, you just do that and enjoy. In a sentence, I would rather relax at the beach than have a really active vacation. To learn English with EnglishClass101.com. To learn English with EnglishClass101.com. Thanks. So I guess if you are very ambitious this summer, good for you. You can learn English by doing what you're doing now. Uh, or I think you can visit, I presume you can visit the website for more content there too. I'm going to put my time to good use and learn English at EnglishClass101.com. To have a barbecue. Oh yeah, the next one is one of my favorite things ever to do in summer. 
wherever I am, it's to have a barbecue or to have a BBQ is also okay, but barbecue usually. BBQ is in like writing. I love having barbecues with my friends in the summer. Every 4th of July, my family has a big barbecue to party all night. The next expression is to party all night. To party all night, you don't, it doesn't have to be summer or the United States to party all night. Just saying. <laughs> anyway, to party all night means to do something you enjoy, presumably with your friends or not, I guess. I partied like all night at home. I tweeted pajamas are the best and then I tweeted a picture of myself really excited about a cookie and was very embarrassed about that the next day so I deleted it in the morning. <laughs> Since I won't have school in the morning, I'm going to party all night. In a different sentence, I don't like partying all night. I get tired. I always hit a wall at like 3 a.m. Like I'm like, yay, and then 3 a.m. I'm like, I'm ready to sleep. To get a tan. To get a tan. To get a tan. In some cultures, this is a good thing. In some cultures, it's not a good thing. It means to sit in the sun or lay in the sun and let the sun uh, change the color of your skin. Be careful. There's There are two expressions in English. There is one to get a tan and another is to get a sun burn. So in U.S. culture, anyway, getting a tan means like your skin turns like a darker brown color. But when it turns red, it's bad. That means you've burned your skin. So tan, good, burn, bad. So we have two separate words uh, to describe that. In a sentence, you'll find me poolside getting a tan. To go hiking. The next expression is to go hiking. So hiking means walking or trekking, usually in a mountain or in a nature setting. So in a sentence, I used to go hiking with my family every summer. That's roughly true. In this sentence, I'm going to hike the Pacific Crest Trail to work a part-time job. The next expression is to work a part-time job. To work a part-time job is very common if you're a student especially. So when you have your summer vacation, it's a chance for you to earn a little bit of money by working at a part-time job. Uh, in a sentence, Unfortunately, she can't go because she has to work at her part-time job. Ah, when I was a teenager, I had a part-time job at a golf course. Yeah, because I was on the golf team at school. Very convenient, lovely experiences. A plus, everybody. To have fun with friends. To have fun with friends. Also something that you do not need to only do in summer, but which you can do anytime. We're having fun now, aren't we? Yay! <laughs> so to have fun with friends is just to enjoy time with your friends. It's great. Uh, in a sentence, I love having fun with my friends whenever I can. He has fun with friends, but he doesn't do much else. Oh. To attend summer school. The next one is to attend summer school. To attend summer school usually has kind of a bad image in, I feel, in, U in the U.S. anyway, because it sounds like maybe you missed something in regular school. Um, but for some people, maybe there's a special course they want to attend or like a special internship program or just something special extra that they would like to study. In a sentence, uh, I hated going to summer school when I was a kid. Since I failed the class, I'll have to attend summer school. So those are 10 things that you can do in the summer in the U.S. or in many other countries, I think. If there's something that you like to do in the summer in your country, or in any country for that matter, let us know in the comments. So thanks very much for watching this episode of Top Words. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. We will see you again soon for more fun stuff. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Gabriella. How are your English listening skills? In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? A man and a woman are talking. When are they going to see the movie? Why don't we go see a movie on Saturday? Yes, I'd love to but I have to work a shift in the morning. What time will you finish? I'll finish at two o'clock. Then let's meet up at the cafe at three o'clock and see a movie at four o'clock. Okay. When are they going to see the movie? A man and a woman are talking. When are they going to see the movie? Why don't we go see a movie on Saturday? 
Yes, I'd love to, but I have to work a shift in the morning. What time will you finish? I'll finish at two o'clock. Then let's meet up at the cafe at three o'clock and see a movie at four o'clock. Okay. A man is talking with a salesperson at the mall. Which shirt is he going to buy? Hmm. Which shirt do you think is better, the white one or the blue one? Well, I think the blue one is better. It goes well with this gray jacket. You think so? But it doesn't go so well with this red tie, does it? Well, that's true. Okay, then I'll take the white one, not the blue one. Which shirt is he going to buy? A man is talking with a salesperson at the mall. Which shirt is he going to buy? Hmm. Which shirt do you think is better, the white one or the blue one? Well, I think the blue one is better. It goes well with this gray jacket. You think so? But it doesn't go so well with this red tie, does it? Well, that's true. Okay, then I'll take the white one, not the blue one. A man and a woman are talking. What are they going to do first? What do you want to do today? I want to go see a movie. Okay, I want to watch the baseball game on TV. Also, I want to go shopping. The baseball game starts at one o'clock. Okay, so let's see the movie first, and then you can watch the baseball game. All right, then we'll go shopping in the evening. What are they going to do first? A man and a woman are talking. What are they going to do first? What do you want to do today? I want to go see a movie. Okay, I want to watch the baseball game on TV. Also, I want to go shopping. The baseball game starts at one o'clock. Okay, so let's see the movie first. And then you can watch the baseball game. All right, then we'll go shopping in the evening. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask someone about what sports they like. If you're a sports fan, then you'll know how much fun it is when you meet someone who likes that sport as much as you do, even if they don't like your favorite team. You may assume that you just say, "What sports do you like?" Of course, this is a normal way to ask this question, but there's actually a more natural way to ask this. In idiomatic English, we use the phrase "to follow a sport" to mean to like or be interested in a sport. So you can ask, "Do you follow sports?" or If you think it's likely that the other person does like sports, you can ask, "What sports do you follow?" You can answer either of these questions by saying, "Yeah, I follow," and then the name of the sport. "Yeah, I follow soccer." Or you can say, "Yeah, I like soccer." Or you can use the phrase, "I'm a fan of." "Yeah, I'm a fan of soccer." But what if you don't like sports? Again, remember what we said before about being careful not to hurt the other person's feelings by saying anything too offensive. Just say, "No, I don't really follow any sports." Lots of people don't like to watch sports, but do like to play sports. If this is you, then you can say, "I don't really follow sports, but I like playing," and then the name of the sport. I don't really follow sports, but I like playing soccer. A good place to expand the conversation is if you answer, "Yeah, I follow soccer," and the other person answers, "Me too," or something similar, to then ask about what teams they support. All you say is, "What team do you support?" Or, as we said in previous lessons, you can expand the conversation by asking the other person, "How about you?" Once you've finished answering. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. Sports are a very popular topic of conversation in the U.S. It's a totally neutral, easy to talk about topic, which avoids controversial themes such as politics and religion, which are not usually considered appropriate things to talk about with someone you've just met. What sports are you into? Let us know in the comments. Hi everyone, I'm Bridget, and welcome to today's lesson. 
Our topic for this lesson is five most popular sports. Let's get started. Soccer. Soccer is probably the most popular sport in the world. In America, it's called soccer. In other places, in other countries, it's usually called football. Soccer is a game that's played totally without your hands. You kick the ball back and forth to your team members trying to score a goal. The biggest soccer tournament in the world is the FIFA World Cup, where countries from around the globe compete to be the very best. Football. Football. A lot of football players get injured because it's a very rough sport. In America, we call this game football, but in other countries, they say American football. Football is a game that's played with a football that's carried in your hand, which is very counterintuitive. You pass the football, you run yards, and you try to score touchdowns. In America, we have the Super Bowl, which is the biggest game of the year, Everyone around the country watches this big football game. Baseball. Baseball is called America's national pastime. Baseball is a very popular sport around the world. There's a pitcher who pitches the ball, and then there's the batter who hits the ball and runs around the bases to score runs. Basketball. Basketball. Many basketball players live like rock stars. You dribble the ball, which means bouncing the ball, and you shoot it through a hoop to get points. Hockey. Hockey. Hockey is incredibly popular in Canada. Hockey is a game that's played on ice skates, and the players skate around on the ice with hockey sticks, hitting a hockey puck to score goals. And that brings us to the end of this lesson, five most popular sports. What is your favorite sport? What sport is most popular in your country? Leave any questions or comments below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to go to EnglishClass101.com to learn more English. Scores. <laughs> Points? <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to English Topics. My name is Alicia and today I'm joined in the studio by... I'm Davey. Welcome Davey and thanks for joining us. So today our topic is going to be about how to use movies and music and TV shows to improve your English. So we're both going to share from our own personal experiences but maybe uh, we're going to share a few things uh, we haven't done I suppose uh, but perhaps could help you. I don't know, that's kind of a weird thing to say. Anyway, uh, do you want to start? Sure. All right, what's a way to improve English with music, TV, movies? All right. Any ideas? My Yes, I do have some ideas. My first recommendation is to use subtitles in English as early as possible. This isn't always very uh, easy if you're just starting out learning English. If you're starting out learning English and you're watching movies in English, you're probably watching in subtitles of your own language. But as soon as you're comfortable uh, reading in English, and when you're comfortable getting most of what you're listening to in English, I think switching to subtitles in English is really important. Uh, because I think when people are watching movies and television shows in English, they think that it's really going to improve their listening more than anything else. Mm -hmm. But I think you can improve other skills too, not only your listening. Uh, and so if you switch to subtitles in English, you're also going to improve your reading. You'll learn to read faster. You'll match the spellings of English words with how they sound, uh, and that will really help improve both skills a lot more quickly. Mm -hmm. And it'll help you understand what's going on on screen. Yeah, actually, I really do agree with that. But mm -hmm. interestingly enough, I put uh, maybe the first step to what you just described. That okay. was one of mine. So I said, uh, listen to movies in your target language uh, with your native language subtitles on. So initially, I was thinking yes, of this as an initial tip. So to get used to listening to your target language, but then being able to familiarize yourself with your nat in your native language through using subtitles. Mm -hmm. But then after, after you get comfortable with that, maybe you watch the same movie a few times, for example, you get familiar with the story, with the, um, the things that the characters say, then you can switch to using subtitles and familiarize yourself with the story in a whole new way. So that can be a really fun way, I think, um, to practice both your listening and your reading skills. I totally agree. And I suppose you could even read the subtitles out loud along with the characters, too. That's... We're getting ahead of ourselves. Oh, my! That brings me to... You should have gone first. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, but that brings me partly to my, my second tip, which is shadowing. Mm. Uh, so you can do this not only with movies and television, but with music as well. 
uh, basically just trying to repeat what you hear or what you're reading uh, as you're listening to it on the screen uh, very immediately after you hear it. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, if you hear uh, a song lyric or a phrase in a movie or a TV show, immediately after you, you hear it, try and repeat it back. Mm -hmm. And that will help kind of improve your speaking, especially regarding uh, pronunciation and how you connect different words together. Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. I had the same one. <laughs> I had the same point about uh, music. Uh, mine was, but mine in particular was memorize song lyrics and mm -hmm. sing along. So yeah. uh, I think that gives you an extra sort of way to study if you actually have to read the song lyrics and try to remember them and repeat them back, uh, sometimes even without the accompaniment of of the artist that you're listening to, that can be a good way to practice trying to create or trying to just, you know, repeat something without having necessarily like the audio prompt. Mm -hmm. um, but one point, and I was thinking about this as I was writing this card too, it is a little bit tricky. Like it, there is something a little bit different about music. And I think this differs from TV shows and movies. How so? Um, that sometimes one, music doesn't always use perfect grammar. That's true. One. And two, sometimes artists will kind of stretch sounds or artists will kind of change sounds or change emphasis um, to make the, the words that they're using match the beat or the rhythm of their song. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not always the best way um, to, to practice your, your target language. Um, and one more point, if I can add to that, is that frankly, a lot of popular music, there's lots of rude words you have to be really careful about. Uh, and there's also just kind of nonsense, too. So you can't expect everything that you hear in music to be exactly the way that people speak. But in general, yeah, I think that's exactly right. In yeah. terms of just getting familiar with a, a, a better, a more natural rhythm, it can be a really good tool to use. I completely agree. Yeah. OK, you, so we're you, two for you two. You set me up as, again for oh. my third one. Oh. They're just blending right together. OK. Uh, my last point here is don't believe everything you hear, specifically to mean that Yes, uh, not only song lyrics, but TV shows and movies oftentimes use imperfect or incorrect grammar as well. Uh, and so you can't always think that that's exactly how something should be said, uh, just, to, just because you heard it in a song or saw it on TV. Uh, so for example, right now I'm actually re-watching uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm a, a very, very open uh, Buffy fan. And uh, as I was watching Buffy just uh, today, uh, I realized how they speak on that show isn't really like most people speak English, especially the, the writers of that show and the characters on that show sort of have their own way of speaking that isn't uh, typical at uh, all. That's and, really true. Yeah, so if, if, you're, if you are a learner watching that show or watching other shows too, um, you might think that that's how people speak English. <laughs> Uh, and hearing vocabulary that you've never heard before, but it's just made up for the show. It's only used on the show. Ah, so that's a key point then. So yeah. maybe be, if you're going to watch TV or you're going to watch movies to try and study English, maybe like science fiction or fantasy or like historical movies aren't necessarily the best. Well, maybe historical movies to some extent. But sure. maybe it's good to pick like a modern uh, or a more contemporary yeah. um, thing to study from. Like I know Friends is a really popular That's TV true. show. That's comedy. A lot of people like to use yeah. that. So that is a good point too, I think. Okay. We actually differed finally on that. <laughs> I had something totally different. Um, this is something that I actually did when I was studying, uh, which was translate songs you enjoy, or at least try to translate songs that you enjoy. Because... Um, a song is usually maybe three minutes, four minutes long, and there probably aren't going to be words that entire time, and there's going to be some repetition of those words. So if you can identify, if you can find a song that you like, an artist that you like, and um, maybe there's something that's just, you just love this particular track or whatever it is, if you try to translate that, even if it's not a correct translation, um, you can still be learning those words and you can still be studying how those words fit together and how maybe um, you can understand those words in other situations. So maybe yes, yeah. a word that you've translated in song A, you might hear again in song B, maybe by the same artist or a different artist. So because you took the time to try to translate it or at least have an idea of what it might mean, you can identify it in a different context, in a different situation. So this is something that I actually did. 
That's a very good idea. Yeah. 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 And it was fun. Too. Good, good. Yeah, fun. I think any anytime you hear a new word or anytime you hear a language that you're studying, you're doing that so you that so that you can use that language in the future in other contexts. And so that's a really good uh, first step to doing that, taking mm -hmm. what you've learned, trying to translate it uh, and, and using it in other ways. Mm, I think so. Okay. That's all I have. Do you have anything else? Uh, that's, that's all I have for now. Okay. And if you have any other ways that you like to use music, movies, TV shows, other kinds of media uh, to study English or to study another language, please let us know in the comments. All right. Thanks very much, Davey, for joining us. You're and very welcome. thank you all very much for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to like this video. <laughs> Hit the like button on this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And if you're looking for more detailed lesson information, such as the stuff we talked about today, you can check us out at EnglishClass101.com. Thanks very much for joining us for this episode of English Topics, and we'll see you again soon. Bye! Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi everybody, welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're going to be talking about 10 gamer speak words. I am excited about this one. Let's go. First word is achievement. Achievement is used when you have completed a mission. In some games, there's a very famous phrase that says like achievement unlocked. Good feeling. Beta. Beta. It's for something that's not quite finished, but that's maybe in like a testing phase. You could hear like the beta release of something or like the beta test version of blah, blah, blah. For example, I am beta testing a running game right now. That is true. Next is boss. If you've ever played a video game, probably you know about a boss battle. You've been playing through a level, and at the end of that level, there's a boss that you have to fight. It's kind of interesting now thinking about it, how we use boss for the main challenger that you have to defeat in a video game level, but we also use it for, like, our managers at work. So, um, the next word is role-playing game. Role-playing game is commonly abbreviated, commonly shortened to RPG. This is a very popular style of game, a role-playing game, meaning you play a role. Role-playing games have evolved over years. Now you can play, for example, MMORPGs, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. I have been playing role-playing games since I was like 11 and my brother convinced me to play Final Fantasy VII. The next word is checkpoint. You might also hear save point. You save your game and then you continue on in the game and then if you die, you go back and you respawn. You come back to life from that checkpoint. I feel like checkpoint is used more in like a racing game, but save point is used more in an RPG. The next one is noob. N-O-O-B. I love the word noob. Mostly to talk about myself actually when I've made like a really stupid decision. Noob means rookie. It means someone who is inexperienced at something. You can use noob in a game if you find someone who has just joined the game. They're a brand new player. They are a noob. They don't know anything. Farming. Let's talk about farming. In gaming terms, it means you are trying to collect a certain item. It has like kind of a reputation for being a bit boring because you're just killing like the same creature over and over again. NPC, NPC means non-playable character. There are other characters within the game that move the story forward, but that you cannot play as. You cannot become that character, but you interact with them. I have to talk to an NPC in order to move this quest forward. Next is camper. A camper is someone who is waiting for a creature to spawn. So a person who's waiting for the monster to appear is called a camper. You can use camping as a verb too to talk about that. Like, I'm camping this monster. Really? People camp other players? I suppose so, depending on the kind of game you're playing. MMO is a massively multiplayer online game. It means you can play online with a lot of different people, essentially. Well, that's all. That's the end. So those are 10 gamer speak words. I really enjoyed doing this lesson. It's been a long time since I've thought about video games, and now I want to, like, go home and play. <laughs> it was really fun. If you enjoy video games uh, and want to use your English to be able to explain them, these are some words that might be really, really useful for you. All right, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time for more fun stuff. Bye. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to ask and answer the question, have you seen this movie? Sometimes when you're talking to someone, you might run out of things to talk about. Don't worry, it happens to everyone.
This lesson is going to be really useful in increasing your repertoire of small talk questions by focusing on a topic that most people are at least a little bit interested in, movies. If you find yourself with nothing to talk about, or if you just really like movies, then you can always start a conversation about a new or controversial movie. You do this by asking, have you seen, and then the name of the movie. The question, have you seen, is used when asking about movies rather than, did you see, because you're asking about the person's present state. There are several possible answers to this. If you have seen the movie, there are again several ways to reply according to how much you enjoyed it. If you saw it and really enjoyed it, you can say, yeah, I really liked it. Or if you saw it but only thought it was so-so, you can say, yeah, it was okay. Or if you saw it but didn't like it, yeah, but it wasn't really my thing. Remember with this last one that you shouldn't criticize the movie too much until you know what the other person thinks of it, in order to be polite. The logical follow-up to one of these responses is to ask what the other person thought of the movie. You can just say, what did you think of it? And then this starts off a potentially interesting conversation about your opinions on the movie. However, how do you answer if you haven't seen the movie in question? All you have to say is, no, not yet. This, not yet, implies that you're planning to see the movie at some point and so signals to the other person that they shouldn't tell you about key points of the story. If you don't plan to see the movie in question, or if it's not the type of movie you like, you can get this across politely by saying, no, it's not really my sort of thing. Now it's time for Alicia's advice. If you have seen the movie in question, but the other person hasn't, it's a great conversation starter to tell them about the plot of the movie or about any particularly funny or memorable scenes. But be careful. You should always ask if the other person plans to see the movie in the future before telling them any important plot points. Just say, do you plan to see it at some point? Telling someone an important plot point or the twist or ending of a movie is called spoiling a movie. The noun is a spoiler, as in, don't tell me any spoilers. It's considered very bad manners to reveal a spoiler without giving warning first, and some people can get very annoyed if you do this, so be careful. In general, talking about movies is a pretty safe topic if you don't want to offend people. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. How are your English listening skills? First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. A woman is calling on the phone to reserve tickets for a play. Which two seats did she get? Hello, this is Blackfriars Playhouse. Can I help you? I'd like to get two tickets for King Lear at 5.30 this evening. Do you still have any tickets available? We do have a few seats left, but I'm sorry to say we don't have any next to each other. If you don't mind, though, we can get you two seats separately. Okay, we don't mind. Do you have any particular requests? Well, do you have any aisle seats? Yes, we have an aisle seat at the left side of the center section. And to the right of it, three seats over, we have another free seat. To the side? Okay, then please book that aisle seat. Certainly. How about the other one? Do you have any seats near the center? The only center seats we have left are from the first row to the third row. I'm not too crazy about having actors spit on me, so... This room is relatively small, and I think you could enjoy the play even at the end of the row on the side. Is that so? Then I'll take the one you mentioned before on the left side. Which two seats did she get? A woman is calling on the phone to reserve tickets for a play. Which two seats did she get? Hello, this is Blackfriars Playhouse. Can I help you? I'd like to get two tickets for King Lear at 5.30 this evening. Do you still have any tickets available? We do have a few seats left, but I'm sorry to say we don't have any next to each other. If you don't mind, though, we can get you two seats separately. Okay, we don't mind. Do you have any particular requests? Well, do you have any aisle seats? Yes, we have an aisle seat at the left side of the center section. And to the right of it, three seats over, we have another free seat. To the side? Okay, then please book that aisle seat. 
Certainly. How about the other one? Do you have any seats near the center? The only center seats we have left are from the first row to the third row. I'm not too crazy about having actors spit on me, so. This room is relatively small, and I think you could enjoy the play even at the end of the row on the side. Is that so? Then I'll take the one you mentioned before on the left side. A woman is asking about a library's lending policy. Which materials could she borrow at one time? Excuse me, can you tell me how to borrow books? Is it your first time at this library? Yes. Well, then I'll explain the rules to you. You can borrow up to six books and five CDs or DVDs at a time per person, but you can only borrow up to ten items in total at a time. Everything needs to be returned in two weeks, and if you'd like to renew, please let us know before then. Can I also borrow magazines or newspapers? You can't borrow newspapers, but you can borrow magazines except for the latest issue. Can I return them through the mail? We can't accept returns through the mail. Please come to the library to return them. After hours, you can put them in the box next to the entrance. But items that are overdue, please return them directly to this desk. I see. Thank you very much. Which materials could she borrow at one time? A woman is asking about a library's lending policy. Which materials could she borrow at one time? Excuse me, can you tell me how to borrow books? Is it your first time at this library? Yes. Well, then I'll explain the rules to you. You can borrow up to six books and five CDs or DVDs at a time per person, but you can only borrow up to ten items in total at a time. Everything needs to be returned in two weeks, and if you'd like to renew, please let us know before then. Can I also borrow magazines or newspapers? You can't borrow newspapers, but you can borrow magazines except for the latest issue. Can I return them through the mail? We can't accept returns through the mail. Please come to the library to return them. After hours, you can put them in the box next to the entrance. But items that are overdue, please return them directly to this desk. I see. Thank you very much. Did you get it right? I hope you learned something from this quiz. Let us know if you have any questions. See you next time.